For this question, we're going to use trigonometric derivative principles to optimize a situation. We have a thin rigid pole needing to be carried horizontally around a corner with two corridors of differing widths. The corridors are 90 degrees to each other, so we want to calculate the length of the longest pole that can be carried around that corner. So we start with a diagram. Okay, We've got um, the pole is here in black. One of the um, hallways is 1.1 meters wide and the other one is 0 0.7 meters wide. Now we can think of the pole as broken into two parts, this x and this, or sorry, this y and this x. Now uh, using trig principles we see that the x is actually equal to 1.1 over cos theta. If you want to think about it in terms of Sakatoa, you could say that that um, that the cosine of theta is 1.1 over x, which means um, that the length x is 1.1 over cos theta. Similarly, uh, since the sine of theta is 0.7 over y, we can say that y is equal to 0.7 over the sine of theta. Okay, so um, we have our length of our pole in terms of theta given by this expression. And we know that theta has to range somewhere between 0 and 90 degrees. What we can now do is determine the derivative. Well, the derivative of um, 0 0.7 times sine theta to the negative 1 is negative 0 0.7 times sine theta to the negative 2 times the derivative of sine theta with respect to theta, which is cos theta. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to say uh, the derivative of 1.1 cos theta to the negative 1 is negative 1.1 cos theta to the negative 2 times the derivative of cos theta, which is negative sine theta. So um, we have positive 1.1 cos theta to the negative 2 sine theta minus 0 0.7 cos theta over sine squared theta or in other words, cos theta times sine theta to the negative 2. We get to this expression here. Well, what we do now is we let the derivative equal 0. So we can add this to both sides, and this is what we get, 0 0.7 cos theta over sine squared theta equaling 1.1 sine theta over cos squared theta. Now we can multiply both sides by sine squared theta and cos squared theta, and we get this expression. And then um, we can divide each side by 1.1 and divide each side by cos cubed theta. What that does is it gets us sine cubed theta over cos cubed theta and it gets us 0 0.7 over 1.1. Okay, now the advantage of having sine cubed theta over cos cubed theta is we can call that tan cubed theta. And we can say tan cubed theta is 0 0.7 over 1.11 which means tan theta is the cubed root of this. So we just have to determine the cubed root of that value of 0 0.7 over 1.1 and then determine the tan inverse of that. And the answer is approximately 40.7 degrees, which is within our domain of 0 to 90. So uh, we realize we can't actually sub in a 0 because sine of 0 would be 0 and 0 0.7 over 0 would be undefined. But we can take the limit as theta approaches 0. Similarly, we can't actually plug in a theta value of 90 because that would make cos theta 0. 1.1 over 0 would be undefined. But we can uh, determine the limit as theta approaches 90. So the limit as theta approaches 0 of L of theta is infinity because we would have 0 0.7 over an infinitely small number. Similarly, the limit as theta approaches 90 of L of theta is infinity because we would have 1.1 over an infinitely small number. So both of these are not our minimums, but if we plug in 40.7, we're in business. If we plug in 40.7, we have 0 0.7 over the sine of 40.7 plus 1.1 over the cos of 40.7. And that is approximately equal to 2.52.